this is Anthony Gordon, Artist Relations Manager for Avid, coming at you from NAMM 2013. And we are here with a very, very special guest. He's a longtime friend of the company. He's a longtime friend of music. We're here with none other than the legendary Dave Pensato. <laughs> man, good to see you, man. How you doing? I'm great. It's great to see you. Yeah, this seems like a um, this seems like a, a a really vibrant NAM this year. I mean, it feels better than it's felt since 05, 06. I, it? I totally it's, agree with you. I think the energy is back. I think that people are getting excited again. People are excited about music technology. There's a lot of good stuff happening in the business. Uh, and you know better than most folks. Uh, for those of you, of course you know if you're watching this, Dave Pensado, one of the greatest mixers of all time. But you have a, <laughs> you have a show every week called Pensado's Place. And on this show, you get the biggest producers, engineers, mixers in the world to come in and share their tips and tricks and secrets that they're usually reluctant about sharing. And for some reason, you get them to share it. How do you do that? What's, I, what's your secret? I, I, I don't know. It's so funny. I, I'll spend two years in the same studio with someone, see them every day, hang out, eat lunch every day, and they come on my show. I learn more in 30 minutes on my show about what they do than, than in the real world. I think, I think all producers and engineers actually kind of want to share because we work in little caves. No one can really truly see what we do except for other mix engineers. And so much of what we do, we do for ourselves because the world can't hear a lot of what we do. And by the time it makes it to an MP3, a good 30% is lost, 30% 30, 30 is lost anyway. So I think it's just a natural kind of providing a, uh, I, I, I don't do gotcha questions. It's not to catch a predator mixer style. It's, it's just yeah. hanging out with some buddies, ch chatting the way we chat when we see each other. Almost 90% of the people on the show are friends of mine, and, I, and, and the ones that aren't, they're people that I just really, really like what they do, and I'm very familiar. I listen to a lot of music, so uh, I put them at ease or try to by starting with a question that shows that I've actually listened to their work over the yeah. years, and, and it just flows from there. I don't think it's me or anything. I think it has a, com it's a combination of the set we have is pretty elaborate. The, her, my partner, is is comforting because everybody knows if I get too far out, Herb's going to rein me back in, and it's a combination of things. And I think people just really want to share. It's 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 a different world than it was five years ago. I think uh, a long answer, Anthony, but I think that I think that we're not like magicians. If a magician shows you how he saws the woman in half, he's out of a career. Right. We don't do magic. We do music, and and there's. You said tips and tricks. I, 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 I love that term, but technically we don't really do tricks. We, it, right, right. It, it, and it's a valid term. I'm not criticizing you, but I think that people understand that that you can you can you can you can use all the JJP plugins you want. You're not going to sound like Jack. And and I can tell you everything I do. I my assistants, there's a crap load of them. They all know exactly what I do. And thank goodness most of them sound better than me. None of them sound <laughs> like me. So why wouldn't I share? Right. So you, one of the things that we're doing here now. Any more time left after that <laughs> answer? <laughs> so uh, w one of the things that we're doing together here at NAM is we're actually taping some content live here at NAM for the Pensado's Place show. Yeah. We've got Fitz from Fitz and the Tantrums. You've got Greg Wells. Yeah. Uh, we've got a bunch of special guests. And tomorrow we're having a blowout. Blowout special celebration we're, for the 100th episode. We're shutting episode. this MF down tomorrow. That's right. So tomorrow is the 100th episode anniversary of the show. Coming up and looking back on 100 episodes, you've talked to literally every heavy hitter making records. What are some of the, the trends that you've seen and you've noticed? that they're feeling about the state of music technology now and where it's heading that you've learned over the last hundred episodes? Well, first of all, that's such a great question. You're going to guest host if I'm ever ill. Um, you know what? I'm going to expand the question a little bit. I probably have learned more from sitting across from these great engineers, mixers, producers than anyone. Um, I think that the, some of the things I've picked up is if Michelangelo were still painting the Sistine Chapel and the and the Pope had not died, he'd still be working on it. Probably the biggest thing I've taken away is an unlimited amount of time is not your friend. I think we need deadlines. I think we need discipline. Um, 
Chris Lord Algae said that, uh, Justin Niebank, uh, Phil Tan, on and on and on, Manny, and Jack Joseph, everybody. That was one of the things that I've implemented in my own life. I, I try to I try to put okay by if I start at noon by by two o'clock I want to have the vocal done the backgrounds done I want to have the, the mix somewhat organized I want to understand it and then that's all my technical for the day and then I start working on the most second most important element in the mix and then by 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 six or dinner I want the mix to be basically done so I can take a break eat come back and hear it fresh. And then I'm not doing heavy lifting. That part is hit tweaks. So I, I impose these little time limits on myself. I got that from the show. Um, I think that the, the philosophical trend that I'm noticing is we don't have that stupid, irrelevant analog versus digital argument right. anymore. Um, thanks to, to companies like Avid and the new HDX systems, the, the HDIOs. I, 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 I'm serious when I say this, guys. I own the stuff. I use the stuff. It's the tool, much like a carpenter uses a hammer and nail or, or an, uh, an automatic uh, air uh, hammer gun. These are the tools I use to make a living, and, and the gap between analog and digital doesn't exist anymore. It's, it's, we've greatly surpassed the limitations of the media we deliver on now. Uh, and I've heard that from a number of my friends, some of them who were staunch. Sometimes I think, and I could get in trouble for this, but sometimes I think there's an impediment with some engineers that they can't admit it publicly because their clients are locked into a particular sound. But I think that's a huge thing that, that, that I just don't hear that argument anymore. And, and that guys now understand that, I'll give you an example. A well-known engineer that's been on my show had two equalizers that are roughly seven, eight thousand dollars a piece. He bought the plug-in version and sold them. That they were that good. Yeah. And then, and then with the with the AAX plug-ins that are that are just becoming more and more prevalent and ready every day. And with the with the new system, um, kudos to Avid for going 64-bit. A lot of R&D went into this. There's a lot of cost involved in creating this product, but. It's as good as it gets, guys. Uh, there's some cats that if I told you what they said to me privately, you'd go, no. But I, I've got oh, go one ahead. friend. Name that, names. I got one Let's get a friend. List. <laughs> Dave Pensado. I got one friend that actually sold his analog console that I thought I'd never see. It's that. It, that's that's probably the biggest trend. Uh, hold my microphone. Yeah. Uh, let me explain it this way with, with high tech avid graphics. When we in 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 '95 back when I started using Pro Tools. Analog was here, digital was here. Around, around 2000, the 888s brought us here, the 192s brought us here. Now, the closest I can keep my fingers together, that's how far away we are. And I would argue that because of the way we've trained a generation to appreciate the sound of digital, if this is digital and this is analog, I would argue we're actually here now because those of us that grew up on, on, on 70s, we might still think this, but my daughter and her generation, digital sounds new to them. And, and remember my smart ass saying, it's better to sound new than sound good. But let's modify that. Why not do both? Nice. Good job. Yeah, good job is for that, you. Is, it, does, it, is the union gonna get mad? Did we? Did we violate any union rules by letting him hold a microphone? Okay, just checking. <laughs> that wasn't funny. You guys are laughing. Thanks. Uh, you know, so looking back now on 100 episodes of Pensado's Place, has there been one moment that stands out to you that really somebody shocked you, somebody surprised you? With, uh, Absolutely. Chronologically, um, the fact that my first guest, who's one of my assistant, the fact that he used uh, a limited number of plugins on the Nicki Minaj album and got what he did. And then Manny, Jack Joseph Puig, when he said he uses compressors to EQ, I couldn't figure, I still haven't figured out what that, that madman meant. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude is like so far ahead of me and everybody else on this planet. I'm still trying to catch up. I'm still confused by some of the things he said, but every time I spend a little time, I thought that was pretty, pretty amazing. Bobby Lombardi, 
changed my life with a lot of the technical aspects of what he said. Uh, that interview I'm kind of proud of because Bobby is a gifted musician, impeccable taste, and technically unequaled on this planet. Yeah, he's pretty good. And, and so when he speaks, you have to listen and uh, just gain structure, a lot of stuff. Um, in, in case the audience isn't aware, I just found out about this interview five minutes ago, so this is off the top <laughs> of my head, which is, which is the way I like to do it. Uh, and I'm not being politically correct, but I pretty much learned something in every episode. For example, Justin Nieback said he used spring reverbs in mono, and I'm like, why would you do that? And then Andrew Shep said the same thing. So now I'm using spring reverbs in mono, and I love it. I love it. There's something special for everyone. Not everyone will like every episode, right. but you should watch them. If, if it's a well-known, successful engineer, watch it anyway, because like say, like say you don't like Chris Lord Algie's work, but he said some things that, that in terms of the infrastructure of mixing that, that, that helped me a lot. You know, you, yeah. I, I'm learning something from everybody. You know what I love about the show? Not everybody is going to be able to assist for Chris Lord Algy or Manny or Jack Joseph Quig. But when you get to watch Pensado's place, it's like a good like little 30 minute, it's a, it's a lesson. And it's not tips and tricks, yeah. it's technique and methodology. Yeah. And being able to get that right from the horse's mouth, I think it's just made, that's what makes your show so special. Thanks, man. And that's why it's been an education to, to everybody in the recording community. You, thank you, Anthony. One of the things that I, I'm proudest about the show is I really firmly believe that there's only one type of creativity. I really firmly believe that that the creativity from Van Gogh or Picasso is the same creativity from Bartok, Mahler, Schoenberg, or the same creativity from James Joyce or uh, Wallace Stevens. Or, and I really feel that the same creativity that, that, that's involved in those people is, is involved in the creation of music. Now, there's paper plates and there's fine china. Pop music's paper plates jazz, classical is fine china. There's things you that they both have uses for. It's not better or worse or anything. So, Dave, I just want to thank you so much for coming down and joining us and partnering with us here at NAMM. We are so excited to see the 100th episode special. We're excited to see the NAMM special you guys are going to have on Pensado's Place. Check it out at pensadosplace.tv. And uh, good luck to you and congratulations on this 100 and the next 100. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Thanks for checking us out. Keep looking in. We will have more special guests coming at you from NAM 2013. Thanks a lot. <laughs>